If you're creating a website with lots of posts, there'll come a time when you need to think about how to display them. Here I generated 40 posts with random content. We could present all this on one page, but it'll take the computer a long time to download all this content at once, before showing the page to users. And what if I have 400 posts? A better option is to break your content into pages. You might decide that the maximum amount of posts per page is 5, 10, or 20, and then the user can move between them on separate pages. Another popular option is to use infinite scrolling. You still choose how many posts to load in at a time, but when a user reaches the bottom of the list, a new batch of posts will load in automatically. Let's set up a page and show you how these and other options work. The first thing we'll do is just set up our basic template, and then we can do the actual pagination. Let's start a new page and name it. Add a new block, make it a toolset view block, and we'll name it. On the next page, we'll leave pagination on. And for the sake of this example I'm showing you, we'll leave the loop style as unformatted. So we can just create a list that goes down the page. For this example, we're just going to load in posts. Okay, so we have our view. And notice that since we chose pagination earlier, there are already page numbers below our main block. We'll come back to this. So let's take a couple of minutes here to quickly set up a template to show our posts. This can be any style you choose. I'm just going to create something that easily displays our information. Let's add a container block. Inside that will be a heading. We'll make it dynamic with a source being the post title with a link. Under our title, we'll show a thumbnail of our posts, featured image, and an excerpt of text. So let's use a toolset grid block. We'll make it two columns. And to start off with, we'll choose this layout. Now, on the left-hand column, we want to fill it with an image. So initially, you'd think to use an image block. That's the logical choice, right? But a trick is to fill a container with a background image instead. You'll see why in a second. It's going to be a dynamic source pulling from the post's featured image. Now, here's the cool part. All the sizings and positionings are already set to cover the entire size of the container. So no matter what size it becomes, the image will fill that space. The one item I'm going to change is below, under the Inner Content tab. I don't want the vertical height to get too small, so let's set a minimum height of 120 pixels for now. OK, for the right side, let's add a single field block. Standard field, post excerpt. And let's make it up to 70 words in length. OK, let's just adjust something else. I don't want a long, flat image, so let's hover over our grid, grab the middle bar, and shift it over to 20%. Let's save and take a look at what we have. It's not bad. We see a list of posts. If you count, you'd see that each page has 10 posts. And at the bottom, we can go to four different pages. That would total our 40 posts. Now, what if we go back to the admin? On the navigator, let's make sure we select the pagination block. Under View Pagination Settings, we'll bring the items per page down to three. After updating, we see that on the front end, we now have 14 pages with up to three items per page. So this is all very controllable. What if we want these pagination numbers styled larger? On the back end, we'll go to the pagination style settings. Let's make the page links large. We'll scroll down and there's a separate setting for the current page. Let's also make that one large, but we'll set the color to white and the background to red. This is just styling. And let's scroll back up to our hover settings, and for the page links, let's let the background be a light blue on hover. On the front end, we see how it looks. That might be a little bit too large for some sites, but it's fun for now. Also notice that each time we choose a new page, the entire screen needs to reload. This is fine, but if we go back to the pagination settings, the default option is selected, which is a regular manual page reload. We can switch this to the second option and get an Ajax transition, which below we see defaults to a 500 millisecond fade. That's half a second. 
On the front end, we see how this looks. Notice that as we move between pages, only the list refreshes, but other items on the page don't reload. Notice the title of the page itself stays static. It's just a bit more elegant, and possibly faster if you have a lot of items on the page. We can also change the style from a fade to something fun like a horizontal slide. You might find an appropriate use for this, especially if you have elements laid out in something like a grid style. Further down, we see there are options to preload and cache your pages. This means that while your user is looking at page 1, the system has time to load in page 2 in advance. You can even set how many pages to preload. And further down, you can add spinner graphics if the load time is long. Going back up to the top of the pagination settings, there's other options. You can add first and last page buttons, or previous next buttons. And there's a list of other options you can play with to customize your experience and layout. We can also use completely different pagination styles. The second option is buttons with no numbers. Let's center them, which you could also have done for the numbers. And we'll change back to a regular fade transition before we view it. Great. The next item is a dropdown of numbers. And the last option is where you only show previous and next buttons. OK, now let's show you how to do infinite scrolling. We'll go back to the transition effects and just choose it. And since infinite scrolling makes more sense if we show more than three items at a time, let's jump back to our original 10 items per page, which for infinite scrolling is sort of 10 items at a time before loading in more content. And on our infinite scroll, we don't want to see page numbers or previous next buttons. So we can just delete the pagination block altogether. Now don't worry, we can still get to the pagination settings. Using the navigator, we select our view, and all the pagination settings are on the right column. OK, looking at the front end, we can see that we can just infinitely scroll until we see all 40 posts. You might notice a small reload every 10 posts if the web server has to catch up. I'll mention one last thing. Going back to the admin panel, under pagination, we've shown the first two options, regular manual loading of pages and Ajax loading of pages. The third option is loading of pages automatically, without the user having to hit a button for each load. Now, this is actually called a slider, and you can learn more about them in the tutorial video about sliders. And now you know how to work with pagination.